Hey, welcome to a Fusion Studio uh, camera tracking tutorial. Um, today we're going to take some footage from our phones, um, import it into Fusion and track a simple cube like this example here. Okay, great. Uh, let's get started. Okay, cool. Uh, we're going to bring in the footage. We're just going to quickly check in preferences that the frame format is set to 30 frames per second because that's what the footage is set at. Um, we're going to drag in the footage from File Explorer and view it in the left viewport. Um, we can click Fit if it takes up too much space and now we can preview our footage in the timeline like this. Okay, nice. Uh, so now we're going to bring in a camera tracker and link this one to here and view in the right viewport and set to fit. Um, and then here are the camera tracking options. So from here we have a few things that we can do, but first of all we're just going to preview the auto track locations. This is just going to give us a rough estimate of where it's likely to put tracking points. Um, for this scene, I only want to be tracking this section of the garden. Um, so I'm going to create a polygon mask um, so that uh, I can help the solve um, and it doesn't create too many points in random places. Um, so to do that, I'm just going to go back to frame zero and use this tool here to create a really simple polygon mask. Um, I won't actually have to make any changes to this because it fits kind of perfectly for how I want to track it. So um, I could come along to frame 295 if I needed to and adjust this, move it up and it will automatically animate into position as you can see. Um, but for this it's not really necessary. Okay, cool. So we'll start looking at some of the camera tracker features. Uh, first thing that you'll notice is these track points are now in the sky and not on the grass, which is not what we want. Um, so we can just come into this polygon tool and use invert and it will swap the mask from white to black, uh, which is what we want for this. Um, as you can see, the points have now moved to the location that I want them at. Okay, cool. So if we go back to frame zero, um, over here we have um, some settings that we can adjust um, to create more or less tracks. So for example, if we come into this minimum feature set and change this down, you'll see more green dots are appearing. Um, this means that it's going to create um, more more tracks, but it also means that it's going to take longer to track um, and to solve. Um, for this footage, uh, it's okay to use around 0 0.4, 0 0.04, sorry. Um, and for the detection threshold, uh, this is okay as well. Um, so then the next tab up here is the camera. Um, it was it was filmed on my phone, so I know literally nothing about what type of camera <laughs> my phone uses. Um, so for this, we're going to leave as default. Um, I do know that the focal length is probably around 20, 25 for this. Um, and that's only because I've, I've obviously tracked it before. Um, and then it's given me a, a guesstimate. <laughs> Um, if you do know these uh, settings, then it's really good to input them because it really does help um, when the camera is trying to do the solve. Um, but for this, we're just going to give this a go. So we're going to go back to frame zero. We're going to come into the camera tracker first tab again and press bidirectional on. Uh, this basically means it will run through the timeline this way and then run through the footage backwards. Uh, sometimes it helps uh, create a better track and sometimes it doesn't. Um, to be honest with your footage, it's best to just experiment with these. So yeah, letting it run through. 
and then bi-directional so it's going backwards again nice um, from here we can then go to the solve tab and then we can see that at the moment there's 4634 tracks um, if this was longer footage um, it might be too many because this is only uh, 295 frames this should solve pretty quickly still um, I'm not going to adjust any of these first because I think it's best to do a solve see what it comes back with and then make adjustments from there if if needed um, sometimes it's not needed other times it's really needed so we just let this run through okay cool um, so this is our first solve um, there's some um, the red tracks here which are bad tracks um, but there are also a lot of good green tracks in this as well um, so this is looking okay um, we can see the solve error here is 0 0.6253 which isn't bad uh, apparently anything under one is uh, is okay um, personally like to get it down to 0 0.3 0 0.4 for uh, the most solid track but um, we're going to do some adjustments to this to try and get this a little bit lower um, so the first thing we're going to do is add a 3D transform um, to get this. I just typed in XF because I know it ends in that, so it's easy to find. Um, you can use one of these, or you can use a merge 3D node. Um, to Basically, we're going to take the output from this camera tracker, and we're going to plug it into one of these to create a 3D scene so that we can see these tracks as a point cloud. It will make it easier for us to remove tracks that we don't want. Um, so for this one, I'm just going to use the transform uh, 3D, but it makes it makes very little difference uh, for just previewing the scene because we're going to delete these afterwards anyway. Um, so yeah, once we're in here, <clears throat> we can see our footage is is uh, generated, and we can see our point cloud here with the red and orange dots. Um, we're going to be tracking the front garden, which is going to be this area here. Uh, by the look of this point cloud, this looks like it's the hedge. Um, so we can start removing some of these points. Uh, we can do this just simply by dragging over the top of them and whacking delete, and that will remove them. Um, if we can hone in on some of the red ones and remove those, that's also good. You don't have to be too neat when there's this amount, but basically we just want to keep the nice bit of track in the front bit of the garden and remove anything that's causing a problem. Uh, we can actually change views down here as well. At the moment I'm in perspective. If you're used to 3D programs then this will be common sense. But um, from here we can go to top view uh, which will make it easier to identify our tracks as well and just delete them. Like I said, the ones we don't want. This here is that bush that we don't need. So we can delete that big whacking bush. Why are you not deleting? Come on. Okay, that's weird that it won't let me delete them. Or there's so many that it's deleting and I can't actually see what it's deleting. Yeah, I think that's the case. That's okay. Um, so basically, we're just going to remove any of these bad ones that we can see. Oh, as well, if the point cloud thing that's been generated is absolutely massive and you can't see anything, uh, if you go back into the camera tracker, uh, you can go up to this tab here and then just change the locator size down to make it easier to see where these points are. like that and yeah just keep changing views whatever works for you to see where these points are okay cool uh, from here we're just going to drag this one back up so we can see the damage that we've done <laughs> um, and then we're going to go back to solve and we're going to 
go back to the beginning. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but I always do it. And press solve again, and it will run back through. And hopefully this average solve error will now be less than it was before. If it goes higher, then I've done a bad job. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty certain it will be lower. Now we've removed some of those tracks that we don't need. And the bad tracks. Yes, so that's good. Uh, it's got less, it's now down to 0.4875. Um, which for this is probably okay. Um, these are still bothering me just because they're red and nasty. These could probably go as well, depending on where they end up. Yeah. Um, so yeah, basically just do this until you get a solve rate that you're happy with and tracks here or wherever you're planning on tracking that looks uh, like it's done a decent track. Um, so if I solve one last time, hopefully it's still lower and not higher which it will be yes it's gone very very slightly down now we're at 0 0.47 uh for this um that should be absolutely fine uh we shouldn't have any problem tracking uh a cube in this scene with with that sort of rate um anything i've missed uh yes focal length uh we didn't know it um i said previously i had no idea in the solve options, you actually have options in here to um, refine focal length, which uh, if checked on, it allows the solver to um, do a bit of uh, guesswork by itself. Um, the track filtering here, we haven't needed, uh, but basically if you tweak these, um, you, with the experimentation, you'll work out basically what they do. But with the solve error here, if I turn it down, then uh, it will it will obviously then change the maximum solve so it's pretty common sense uh like i said with your footage just tweak with these parameters to work out what works well for you um, but if you're getting a solve rate like this then there's really no point in in doing that um from here i'm going to delete this one because it's literally just generating the 3d scene at the moment like this so i don't need it um and then back on the camera tracker we're going to go up to this tab here. We're going to go into 3D Scene Transform. And then we're going to swap this from aligned to unaligned. Um, basically, what we're doing here is telling the um, camera tracker where to place a ground plane. Um, as I said at the beginning, we want to track something in this, this garden. So I'm going to grab all of these ones that are on the floor in this front garden. So all of these little ones here, all of these, this one, these. These, 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 these. Right, hopefully that should be enough. I think I've got most of them. Oh, there's one there. Um, and then from here, we're going to set the orientation um, on the x z axis which is what we want because y is up and we don't want that so we're going to set from selection and you won't see anything happen yet and then on origin we're going to pick one that is basically in the center of where we want to place something um, this is just the positioning of the ground plane um, in location so if you select one over here then it's going to be offset over here somewhere so we want it around here, so we're going to use this one. Um, we're then going to swap this from unaligned to aligned. And then we're ready to export. So we're going to come up here and press export, and it's going to generate a load of extra nodes for us. Ta-da! So it's generated a 3D camera, a point cloud, a ground plane, the merge, and then the camera tracker renderer, uh, which is great. So if we take this merge and we drag it up into the view like this, we can then see that our ground plane, which is this purpley thing, uh, we can make this a bit more obvious if we come in here, turn up the subdivisions and maybe change the color of it so it's slightly brighter. Like this, uh, we've got our ground plane uh, we've got our point cloud that's been generated that is sat 
on our ground plane, uh, which we need. If this is, if you generate this on export and the ground plane is all over the show, then uh, you need to redo the export because the track won't be solid and everything will be sliding all over the show. Um, in here, we can change point cloud settings um, so that we can change the point, which I prefer. I think they're easier to see. Um, uh, we can even see where that hedges here as well perfectly with this um, and the garden and then obviously this was the driveway so it gives a really nice view of what's uh, going on um, and then obviously the 3d camera is the camera that's then been generated with the keyframes which you can see here running along this path um, so if we change this to camera 3d we can then see all of this in our scene so then if we press play we can see that the ground plane sticks fairly solidly to the ground, which is exactly what we want. So this is looking very good for tracking that cube. Um, basically to generate a cube, what I'm going to do is grab one of these points that I like the look of. Uh, maybe... I don't know, wherever you want to place it really, it should track pretty solid in this garden anyway. I'm going to grab this one. Um, from here, you can right click this point cloud, which is super cool. Um, come down to point cloud 3D. Um, and then from here, you can generate shapes. So we're going to just create a shape and it's going to create a couple of nodes when I press this. Uh, so now we have the merge which is merging the 3D shape to the point cloud, from the point cloud, um, and the shape. Uh, and here it is. This is our cube. It's huge, <laughs> which is why it looks like this. So if we scale this down, it will start looking more cube-like. There we go. Um, this cube at the moment, you can see the sat below um, the ground plane. Yeah, it's being awkward. Uh, yeah, so you can see it's cutting through halfway because of its pivot point. Uh, if we go to the left viewport, I zoom in, this will give us a better view. So we can see that it's, yeah, it's currently below this uh, ground plane, which is not what we want. So we can use this transform thing here to just drag it up and place it into position as accurately as we can on our on our ground plane. That's probably okay. Uh, if we go back to perspective now, yeah, it's at least looking like it's sat on it instead of being clipped through. Um, so that's nice. So if we go back to the camera 3D view, then we'll see our cube in position. Um, from here, uh, that's, that's it for adding just a simple cube to the scene. Uh, we can go right click 3D options and then lighting just to uh, make the cube look slightly more, um, well, just with some shading, basically. And that was added lights to the scene. Uh, if we want to preview this, we can hide these things in here. Go to 3D options, and we can hide show point clouds. And we can also hide uh, the grey grid. And if we want to hide the ground plane, we can just unplug it from this 3D merged. And then it's hidden. So now if we scrub back, oh, while we're in uh, Merge 3D, we'll always be able to see the cube outside of the, the footage, uh, but that's not an issue because if we view it through this one, it will lose the lighting. It's then gone, but then it will be in position. Um, so I'll show you a preview of both. But basically, we are, we're kind of done tracking it now. So if we press play, hopefully this won't be sliding. No, it looks pretty... Looks pretty solid to me. Nice. Um, and then if we view it on this one, like I said, it will lose its, uh, its shading, but we can still preview it. Um, in the next video, I'm going to show you guys how to export uh, this camera data and 3D Cube to 3ds Max um, so that you're able to track something more interesting than a cube <laughs> and then uh, bring that back into Fusion.